Okay, so for this video, I'm just doing a voiceover because I actually didn't record, but I have a little uh, micro SD based audio player uh, that can either work with Arduino or standalone. Um, and I'm going to swap out the guts uh, of a Staples Easy button just for a little basically joke thing that I had. Um, so yeah, so these little things can uh, either work standalone or you can hook them up to an Arduino to trigger playing it, but uh, for this use it'll be standalone, so uh, first step of this is just to uh, take this thing apart and probably cut to when there's actually some audio. We pull that off, and yeah, it's just the uh, a really thin, cheap paper speaker, uh, and then a couple weights to make it feel like it's actually worth the six dollars. So and yeah, they're just using a uh, a cheap membrane switch with a metal spring to make the huge button feel better and I swear these things used to be bigger like I feel like there were ones that like took up your whole hand or something but this is the first time I've actually ever had my hands on one of these so okay so that's that for now so what I'm going to do is just off screen because I mean no one wants to bother watching all that is I'm just going to verify the pinout of this uh, using the breadboard um, try and get it to work with this and some alligator clip wires and all that sort of shit. And then uh, I'll come back to desolder these contacts and all of that stuff. Okay, so took a little while longer than I wanted, but uh, I actually got it to work. So this thing is very finicky. Um, I'll include some links to the Arduino forum that had a uh, pinout for this, uh, but also just some troubleshooting that people were using. Uh, you can use it standalone like this. Uh, it's just a bit of a pain. So you actually, there's a certain utility that I had to use to actually format the SD card. Uh, and so uh, after I did that, and it took a good like six minutes for a two gigabyte card, uh, I guess it's just better than the formatting that Windows uses. Uh, formats it to FAT16, and then it was all good to go. Uh, and then also, even with a lower volume for the sound clip, oh yeah, you also have to convert the files from Wave to 84. I'll include a link on how to do that as well. Um, the stock speaker in here um, crackled quite a bit. Uh, and it just wasn't very good for anything loud. Um, so I have an old headphone speaker here. I would like to find something that's made more for like a wider area, not quite so directional, but for now this will work well. Uh, but Let's go ahead so you can sort of hear the difference in the speaker quality. Let's go ahead and hook up this one. So yeah, this one is louder, but it crackles a lot. But yeah, so you can uh, go ahead and turn that on. And so then when you press the button, gonna be nice when this is done uh, but yeah so that speaker crackles quite a lot even at the lower volumes so just in to keep it a bit higher quality I'll just use this Take your sticking paws off me, you damn dirty ape. still crackles a little bit but uh, I'm quite happy with that I don't know if I'll actually put an LED on it um, when I'm done with this just to keep the uh, the power usage down but yeah, I'm going to just quickly pause and then we're going to swap that speaker. One hour later. Okay, one quick shopping trip later, more hot glue. Annoyingly, for like 10 sticks if it had to pay like 12 bucks, or was it 8 sticks? 
I don't know. I bought years and years. And, I bought a whole bunch of years ago at Dollar Store for like two bucks for packs of like 15 of like the nice proper long shit. And now it's just stupid expensive everywhere. Which is annoying. So yeah, we got this little thing that, I don't know, maybe that helped the rattle on the paper cone. Uh, maybe that kept that down when it was actually installed. I didn't try this with the speaker all disconnected. Okay, so you might have seen me messing around with the multimeter leads there for a little bit. Um, uh, I was just doing that lazy, like the audio conductivity test, uh, and I wasn't going through, so I wasn't sure if that was like a three section switch or something. But it's just really high resistance, I guess. I haven't dealt with membrane switches a whole lot, but apparently that's just how they are. So we have our new battery leads. Oops, there we go. Have our speaker wire. Now way off, and then we have the uh, switch, which I've just removed that little two mega ohm resistor from, uh, and then that's going to go in. So now I have to grab my desoldering pump and this, and do some desoldering. Is that zoomed out all the way? There we go. Oh, yeah. Just Sorry, just remembered another part of that. If they are really stiff, annoying ones, you can still cut them. Okay, so you cut them like that so they're all single. And instead of bothering with the desoldering pump right away, you can just go in and pull them out. Just like pulling teeth. Sorry, that's probably what I was thinking of originally, honestly, and I just slightly forgot. Now we have our little playback module, sans pins. So now to figure out where I want to stick this. I'm just wondering if I could get away with putting it down there. Oh yeah, there's um, that's not really gonna be possible to capture, but the wire uh, wires are all good, and the button is actually gonna hit that before it is able to push anything down too far. So uh, sticking it underneath this is going to work just fine.
the downside to using um, Ethernet cable, like twisted pair stuff as uh, your wires, is that the insulation is super freaking thin. And it really lets the heat through. Bastard. Anyways, do I want to put a light on this? I think I'll leave the light out of it. Um, just because I don't really need it. So then I can just stick with some hot glue. Make sure it's actually on camera. Ah, uh, my hot glue going to sleep. Uh, come on, get some out. There, so that's the uh, new heart of our little thing. Uh, and I'm just gonna have to verify the pin orientation. All right, so I'll probably have to go back and forth a couple times with this. Uh, actually, I should have just grabbed the second one and plugged it in there. Uh, so it looks like these two pins, so this is pin one, this is pin 16. Looks like these two pins are for the speaker. Okay, so then we're going to go ahead and take ground, which is that last one there. And our positive is going to be this one right here at the corner. Okay, and then the other side of our switch is going to go around to that one, so. Give it a test run. Okay. Okay, so the high resistance of that switch, I think, is causing an issue. That or I've accidentally bridged something out. Let's see what's wrong. Okay, so, hey, we all make mistakes from time to time, especially when you, like, have to leave and get supplies in the middle of a project. So I completely forgot to cut the other trace on the circuit board. Let me zoom in, that's about it. So I just cut those traces out because there's a little capacitor across this contact, and that allows conductivity through the rest of the circuit. And that was just triggering it all the time. <laughs> so yeah, simple mistake, nice and easy to fix. We bend this stuff back. We pop our battery in. She no make a noise. You press the button. I'm quite pleased with that. So then. Okay, so I wasn't gonna hot glue that, uh, like any of this other wiring in place, just because my hot glue gun was already done, but when I have this, um, oh, that's a little off kilter. When I have this in place, it could, uh, 
rub up against that blue wire if it moves. So I'm gonna let my Hawk Lugan warm up. Maybe find that screw that I lost. And then this project is done. Nice to get a, a relatively quick and uh, easy one out of the way. Okay, so another quick cut due to interruptions, but yeah, um, all finished up. Missing one screw, but you can't really tell. Uh, so yeah, um, I might still try and move the SD card down here. That way I could like easily access it, but mounting it securely and everything would be pretty difficult, I think. Um, maybe I'll look for one of those readers that has a little slot that way I could just uh, loaded into the side but yeah that's pretty good so looks exactly the same externally but when you press it I am pretty pleased with that uh, wasn't worth the like seven dollars before when it said that was easy but um, yeah I like that now if only I had an easy button to press because that was actually fairly easy I uh, considered grabbing a second one for that gag, but screw it. So yeah, um, links to all of the stuff down below, down in the description. Um, so yeah, if you want to build one of these, it's pretty easy. That was easy. Yes, that was easy. Um, Okay, so just a 